Hey everyone, Ariel Adams here from A Blog to Watch. I have been asked by eBay to help you check out a new curated sale of Omega watches. We have selected at A Blog to Watch a few of the watches that we want to identify to you. The sale has over 800 watches and it is going on now for a little while. There are plenty of curated sales on eBay for watches, and this is one of them. So let's dive in. There are a lot of great watches on eBay. This particular list of them is a curated selection, as I said, with retailers that eBay has selected for good availability and pricing, and these are, of course, trusted sellers on top of that. So let's look at some of these watches. This is sort of in a blog to watch top picks presented by eBay for this. So let's look at this one right here. This is an interesting rare model. I'm going to start with a couple of the fancier dress models in precious metals. This is a recreation of a vintage Omega watch that was produced, I believe, around the Sochi Olympics. I think that was the 2014 Olympics. This is a tonneau shaped case. I've seen this watch. I put it on my wrist. It is a handsome timepiece. It is an all gold. It is quite a sort of hefty watch to wear, and I love this these type of lug structure here. Again, this is a piece that I think originally came out in the 1930s. So this was a really cool retro re-release. It was a little bit of a quiet watch, but this is neat. And they called it their museum collection. That's sort of what they call their heritage pieces. And they do actually have the original in the mu museum collection. For an all gold watch, not a bad deal. Speaking of precious metal, here is a platinum Omega watch. These are uncommon. This is a version of the Seamaster Aquaterra GMT. It's actually a world timer. The case is in platinum, as you can see. This is a very rare type of watch for Omega because they don't really make world timers. So you have all the sophistication of an in-house made anti-magnetic movement, and you also have the prestige of a watch that has a world time with a painted globe in the dial there. This is just a really nice timepiece. and definitely something expensive at close to forty thousand dollars but exclusive and very cool here you have a solid gold version of the Seamaster Planet Ocean 600 meter there are definitely a lot of Planet Oceans out there and as a large watch this one is 45 and a half millimeters wide it makes a big statement on your wrist it is definitely true that having a gold dive watch has a degree of confusion to it because dive watches are supposed to be tool watches and gold watches are supposed to be uh, lifestyle watches, status watches, dress watches. So you have the combination here between look I'm an active person and I also want to show off a little bit. Similar but through the Speedmaster collection is this version of the Speedmaster that has a moon face. So this is the Speedmaster moon. This watch I've seen on people's wrists as a dress watch also in gold one of the more uncommon models but a definitely handsome look. Omega makes plenty of dress watches through the DeVille collection. You could consider some of the Constellation watches, of course the Aquaterra. So they definitely have their share of dress watches. But I think what's very interesting is to try to take a sports watch, which would be the Speedmaster, and then turn it into a dress watch. Adding the moon phase indicator there is definitely part of it. This is a watch that we have reviewed on a blog to watch. Not this exact gold version, but I've seen it and worn it. And again, the, the heft of the gold as well as the prestige of the gold mixed with the mythos of the Speedmaster makes for a really sort of interesting watch. Here we have, moving on, uh, outside of gold to other dive watches. This is one of the newer versions of the Seamaster Diver 300M in black ceramic. This was a really interesting watch and I think what was really cool about it is the fact that the case is about two millimeters larger than the standard or maybe one millimeter larger than the standard Seamaster Diver 300M. Uh, definitely a popular watch, an interesting one to check out. This is the Seamaster Diver 300 in ceramic. Speaking of ceramic, this is a blue ceramic version of the Seamaster Planet Ocean with some orange accenting. Not just any Planet Ocean, but the GMT. This one is the case that normally would have a three-hand or a chronograph, and now they've added the GMT to the 45 uh, and a half millimeter wide case. Blue ceramic with orange accents is a great look. Omega has been doing such a fantastic job with ceramic cases that they have a good assortment now. I really thought that this blue and orange one from the Seamaster Planet Ocean collection was cool. A hefty watch, but definitely they did a good job here. 
Very similar to that is this Omega Seamaster Planet Ocean and Ceramic, but black ceramic with some red accenting. This is in the same collection as the one I just showed you here, which was in blue ceramic, but you can see that the accenting is different as well. One of the things which is also interesting is depending on the version of the Seamaster Planet Ocean Ceramic, the case is either polished or brushed, and same goes for the dial. So note that there are different finishes in a different, to different colors. I believe this is the all brushed one, as you can see. And if I recall correctly from seeing this watch in person, the dial has a more matte as opposed to polished tone, which you tend to see with a lot of the Seamaster Planet Ocean watches out there. Again, in blue or black ceramic, the Planet Ocean is a great looking watch. Speaking of the Planet Ocean, here is one with a traditional metal case. I believe this is a tight, no, this is a steel one. Um, they have one that looks very similar in titanium uh, with the blue dial. The Planet Ocean, this version is the 43 and a half, I believe. Yes, 43 and a half millimeter wide, three hand. You can get the Planet Ocean three hand in a large variety of sizes, going from basically, I think it's under 40 millimeters all the way to 45 and a half millimeters wide. This is the 43 and a half miller wide version that for me is a great middle ground between the smaller one and the largest one. I happen to like this size a lot. Every time I've worn a Seamaster Planet Ocean in the 43 and a half millimeter size, I've been quite happy about it. On a blogtowatch.com, we have a piece of content that talks about this curated Omega sale on eBay. And this is one of the watches I believe that we have uh, featured and, and shot. So if you go and you look on a blog to watch for details on the eBay curated Omega sale, um, you'll be able to find more about this watch. This is really a great one. Speaking of Seamaster, while we're on the topic, this is an uncommon one that is hard to find. This is one of the remakes of the Ploprof, which Omega has done a couple of times over. This is a great looking, we'll call cult watch. And when we say cult watch, meaning it, it, it looks a little bit strange, but has a sort of adopted a popularity because watch lovers have really been into it. This one is in white. So it's a large size watch here. I forget the exact measurement. Uh, yeah, they call it 48 millimeters wide. It is it is large to wear um, on the wrist for sure. Actually, it's over, I'm sorry, it's about 40, 48 millimeters tall. It's 55 millimeters wide, but when you wear it on the wrist, it's actually more comfortable. This little pusher that has this orange aluminum cap around it, you, you hold it down and that allows you to turn the bezel. It has a coaxial chronometer movement in there, and there was there was some version of the Ploprof that came after this that did not have a date on the dial that had a slightly modified movement in it, but this is the only one I believe that was in white. Difficult piece to find, but definitely very, very cool. Going back to Speedmaster and Ceramic, the dark side of the moon. The curated Omega sale on eBay has a fair number of dark side of the moon watches. When these came out, they were very, very hot. And for good reason, Omega decided for the first time to create the Speedmaster case in a black ceramic case. The case had both brushed and polished surfaces, so it was finished just like metal and it made for a good look. This was the original version of the Speedmaster Dark Side of the Moon, and it has the, the, the standard colors. There's a few other versions of the Dark Side of the Moon that came out a little bit later that vary up the dial colors, but I think the original is still one of the most attractive. Speaking of Speedmaster, this is the newest version of the Speedmaster Racing, and I happen to like the dial a lot. It has a pale orange and silver tone dial with some black accenting, especially for the hour markers and the hands. It is very legible, very cool looking on the brown leather strap or a matching steel bracelet. This is one of the most interesting looking modern Speedmasters in my opinion. It's definitely not for everyone, but I really enjoy it. Speaking of that, here's a different dial color of the Speedmaster Racing, and I believe this version with the black and silver and white accenting is also going to be featured on the Blog to Watch article with some hands-on pictures. This watch has the most modern 
movement that Omega has placed inside of the Speedmaster, and that is their, their coaxial master chronometer movement, which has all the anti-magnetic features, silicon. It is just a very advanced movement. Um, and what's also interesting about the Speedmaster racing generation is that Omega was able to make the Speedmaster case about one millimeter thinner so that this particular generation of Speedmaster Racing wears more comfortably than somebody might expect. Speaking of Speedmaster Racing, this is the previous generation of the Speedmaster Racing. This was released as a more entry-level model. It has a slightly smaller case. I think it's about 40 millimeters wide. The colors on this generation of Speedmaster Racing were very, very fun. This one has a black, yellow, and white tone on a strap. They really wanted to make these watches more mainstream and fashionable and youthful. And wearing them definitely offers that look. This is one of the, I guess you could say, um, most affordable ways to get into a modern Speedmaster. These ones are no longer made, but they do a really good job of looking good, having that Omega feel, and also being quite accessible in price. Going back a little further, here is one of the older versions of the Omega Speedmaster with the broad arrow hands and the modern looking Arabic hour markers. This is an uncommon look for the Speedmaster. Omega has produced a few watches of this type. The broad arrow hands basically date back to the 1950s and were on the original Speedmaster watch that was later changed to more stick style hands for the, the popular Speedmaster which went to the moon. But this actually represents some real parts of the Speedmaster history. So the broad arrow hands with the Arabic hour numerals and these particular types of um, chronograph subdials, I think just made for a pretty cool look. These are um, less common watches and also have pretty good prices at this time. Moving on to the Aquaterra. This is one of the newest generation Seamaster Aquaterra watches with a sort of whitish silver black with a very orange accenting to it. This blends the sportiness with the elegance that I think Omega is really going for in the Seamaster Aquaterra watches on a very comfortable fitted rubber strap. Prices are pretty good for these models as well and they do contain the coaxial master chronometer movement which is really the most modern type of movement that Omega offers. For the mixture of sort of lifestyle and fun and sportiness and comfort the latest generation Aquaterra watches do an excellent job. Here is a slightly older generation Aquaterra and if you want to take a look at them to see what's different there are of course differences if you see it hands-on but you notice there's a tab between the lugs it's a metal tab that basically changes the shape a little bit of the watch, not too much. You can see this is the, the older version that doesn't have the tab, the newer one that does have the tab. The old, older version also has uh, a slightly different movement and slightly different proportions. Good Planet is a charity and Omega has produced a few Good Planet watches. One of the, I think the first one ever was a version of the Seamaster Planet Ocean in blue and orange. I think that's when they debuted the Seamaster Planet Ocean GMT. The Aquaterra version of the Good Ocean has blue colored hands and hour markers which are applied and a whitish silver dial. So if you're really into blue and the sort of steel silver tone, this is one of the best looking versions of the, the Seamaster Aquaterra. Here we have a completely different type of watch from Omega. This is an older model, and again, going through the curated sale on eBay, I think it was really important just to talk about some of the watches that were popular, as well as some of the uncommon watches that you wouldn't see. This is an older version of the Seamaster called the Apnea, and this really has to do with free diving. So apnea diving is a form of diving where you basically don't breathe. There's no um, oxygen tank or anything like that. You hold your breath and you go underwater and then you have to come back up. Timing is extremely important because the diver, because they have no oxygen, needs to know when to come back up. So it looks like what Omega did here is something very interesting, is they took a regatta timer, which uses these circles on the dial. If you take a look there, there are these circles that turn different colors as the chronograph operates. So it's, it's a slightly different type of chronograph than people are used to. If you're familiar with regatta timers, you'll understand a little bit about how it works. But this one was specifically made for free divers who are diving without oxygen. You can see that it's definitely part of the Seamaster collection, but it has different hands. 
a different bezel and certainly different types of, uh, of operations given the the unique type of chronograph this one has a pretty good price let's see what is this a 40 millimeter wide case uh, 41 and a half millimeter wide case I I've seen one of these watches. I haven't actually put one on my wrist, but if you like Omega and you want something a little bit different, it's very interesting to have these types of finds. Speaking of interesting watches, this is the ETNZ that is a America's Cup uh, boat racing team that Omega has sponsored version of the X33 Skywalker. So I'm going to show you the Skywalker. This was the Speedmaster Skywalker X33 or, or X33 Skywalker. This is basically supposed to be the modern generation of the original X33. Remember there was the Z33 that came out and then that was a little bit controversial in terms of the way it looked. So Omega was like, hey, we need to come back with a good looking quartz analog watch for certain types of professional use. So the X33 Skywalker came out. You can find one of those as part of the special curated sale on eBay, but you can also see variations on it. So here you see the ETNZ version of it. So we have the same movement in here, but as I'm going through the watches uh, to take a look at them, you can see that there's slight differences. The dial has different types of markings on it. The hands are a little bit different colors. The bezel is different. Uh, the strap is different. One has a bracelet and one has a strap. This is a pretty sure a titanium case. Yes, both of them are titanium cases. Definitely the ETNZ one has a little bit more character to it. And of course, if you like blue, it's good. This one, because it is a boat racing watch, they've done a few things to sort of connect it with not only the ETNZ colors, uh, but also the the sort of marine themes of the boats. So here we go, Emirates Team New Zealand. I always found that to be a little bit confusing because Emirates is in the UAE, it's the airline, and then New Zealand, well, is the country of New Zealand. Um, but this is this basically celebrates the New Zealand team. Again, if you want to compare it to the normal Skywalker, a little bit more traditional. You just have the sort of black and white on titanium uh, tone with the red hand. If you want a more serious professional look, the standard Skywalker is great. If you want to have a little bit more fun with it, a little bit more of a marine theme, the ETNZ would be the way to go for the X33. So that is my selection of watches that I thought were particularly interesting as part of this Curate Omega watch sale on eBay. You can visit eBay and take a look at the full sale. You can probably click the link below the video and you can see more on a blog to watch. Thanks.